you focus more on cricketers than on politicians. If I, at the age of eight, nine, you don't know anything about politicians, it was cricketers. And he's bowled him. Full pitch. Stayed right across it and over it and closes out. Bowled with a new ball which As a young man growing up in Barbados, you would have seen the exploits of Sir Charles Griffith. In any way, did that inspire you during your childhood days? Oh yes, uh, the 1960s, uh, I was a boy. And that is when you gain your consciousness. And I want to tell you that you focus more on cricketers than on politicians. In fact, at the age of eight, nine, you don't know anything about politicians, it was cricketers. And the name Sobers, I mean, that was, that was sacred. And for a young Barbadian boy uh, playing cricket in the road and playing at school on the grass piece, it was Sobers, Corrin Hunt, Seymour Nurse, Wes Hall and Charlie Griffith. So that if you were playing a game and you're running into bowls, you used to do your own commentary and you say Charles Griffith coming in, well, we used to call him Charlie. Charlie Griffith comes into bowl, if you're batting, uh, and Simone Nurse drives that one through the covers, but you never, you hardly ever call Sobers his name uh, because Sobers was sacred ground. You didn't call Sobers his name too easily. You referred to him with a kind of reverence, but you never, you never placed yourself on his name. That name was sacred. Uh, it is as if the others were mortals. Sobers was God. So Charlie was one of the mortals. So you were allowed to call his name. So that they inspired you, uh, they gave you a sense of identity. Uh, they gave you self-esteem because as poor young boys, there was nothing else to hold on to. It was a poor country uh, and they gave us something to hold on to. Uh, they were about excellence. They gave us our place in the world. They made us feel that we were relevant in the world. Uh, we had nothing else. So all that, that, that we had was pride and we derived the pride from them. Yeah. Well, Sir Charles Griffith, he formed a formidable duo with Sir Wesley Hall. Yes. And they were part of an era that included Sir Gary Sobers and many others. Yes. I would like to find out from you, in your adult life, yes. have you taken any qualities from that black consciousness and that confidence that they would have actually inspired you in your adult life? Yes. Uh, the first word I would think of, Stephen, is excellence. Uh, these were men who were the best in the world at what they were doing. And to a young boy growing up in Barbados, that meant a lot. As an adult, uh, you wanted to, you had something to emulate because you had come up in a tradition of excellence. You saw excellent men around you. Interestingly, it was cricket. Cricket was at the center of the cultures, at the center of excellence. So that I think of excellence, I think of hard work. So that whatever you did, you tried to be excellent. Whatever you did, you knew that hard work uh, was required to do it. Well, in closing, what I would like to find out from you, the unveiling of this statue in a couple of weeks' time, what type of inspiration do you think that would give to future generations of not just sportsmen on the country, but cricketers and the general citizenship in Barbados? A statue is really a story. Uh, it is not so much a graven image as it is a story. Uh, it, it, it is a reminder to people, uh, generations to come, that this man uh, made his mark and that this man made his mark in a very positive way so that it tells them a story it tells them where he came from hopefully they'll read about him it tells them that he, he came from this humble place this humble soil so that it tells them a story that will inspire them and and cause them to emulate what he did so charles griffith played over 90 first class games 90. got over 300 first class wickets and at the international stage played some 28 games got 94 test wickets yes did you have the opportunity at any point to see him either play for his club either play for Barbados or, or the West Indies Stephen that's interesting in the 1960s when these men and I, I see 1966 as the ultimate I was a little boy you never saw them these men were almost mythical figures at that time televisions were not uh, very prevalent around here so that we heard about them on the radio. We saw a photograph of them in the Advocate and the Daily News at the time. So they were, they were fairly mythical figures. Uh, it was a, almost as if they were in a different realm. So I never saw them. But your imagination, your ability to read, your ability to hear their story, 
and that is what added to the mystique, the fact that you never saw them. I mean, I don't know what I would have done, Steve, even if I was a little six year or seven year old boy, I had seen Sobers. Uh, it, 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 I, I wouldn't know how to describe it. So that you did not see them and that elevated them into a different realm of, of, of mystique. Well, you use the word excellence and I know that you are one who's driven for discipline and for structure yes. and striving for excellence. How do you think Sir Charles Griffith can inspire not just you, but others on this island? Uh, he has inspired. He has inspired. Uh, I know that he comes to you with humility. When you meet Sir Charles now, uh, again, you have to transport yourself from the realm of mystique and myth and you meet the man and he presents as just another person but you know he's great and you know what made him great you know that it was excellence and hard work and determination and strength and mm -hmm. self-belief and a sense of identity a sense of self-worth that although he was a little poor boy from St. Lucie he could play at Perth he could play at Lords and he could do better than people who had more privileged backgrounds and and that is the inspiration well, I want to thank you, Ralph, for taking some time out to be part of this very important yes. conversation. And I want to wish you all the very best in the future. Thank you, Stephen. Pleasure. Okay.